You're welcome back. We're looking right now at uh, what has happened in Niger. Remember that uh, uh, there was a military takeover a few months ago, and right now uh, Niger is uh, removing, purging the nation of all foreign bodies, as it were. Uh, the Fr French troops are asked to withdraw. They have begun withdrawing from uh, Niger. Right now, Niger has also asked the uh, UN representative there in the country UN official out within 72 hours, which is less now because that was from yesterday or so, 72 hours. Uh, he has been asked to do everything that is possible to leave the country. So we are uh, discussing this with Dr. Lome for a public intellectual and po policy uh, analyst on the program this morning. Doctor, good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for hosting me. Okay, Niger, and not only Niger, other African countries that are thinking about a new independence, I, I might call it. Uh, they are calling for independence from the Western nations that seem to dictate to us uh, the kind of things that we need to do and how we should run our country. Right now, the UN um, representative in Niger has been asked to leave in the next less than 72 hours. Would like to get your comment on what is really happening in Niger and on the African continent. Are you on the side that says it's a renaissance of some sort or we're plunging back into the dark ages? Uh, that's a tricky uh, question. And um, first, uh, I must say I'm not an apostle of um, military coups uh, and the unconstitutional change of government. And um, but again, I'm also not uh, oblivious of uh, the fact uh, that uh, in some circumstances where changes, peaceful changes, democratic uh, changes are impossible, um, you know, coups may be justified in some uh, cases. And um, in other words, uh, those uh, who make uh, peaceful and democratic uh, changes impossible should uh, share in the blame for the return of the military on the African continent. Mm -hmm. We have about, about eight now and counting. And um, some uh, countries uh, in Africa are trying to um, respond in a knee jack uh, manner, you know, Rwanda, Cameroon, and others trying to retire their military uh, top uh, brass as a way of uh, warding off uh, the possibilities of coups in those uh, countries. You know, they, I, I may not be addressing uh, the issue uh, because uh, the rising, the Africa rising via a coup, I believe is because of uh, failure of uh, democracy itself. Yes, African continent. Um, because uh, they were um, African countries were majorly colonized by Britain and France, uh, they borrowed the uh, democracy from them. Uh, but democracy in Africa has been questionable. The way and manner it has been practiced. In other words, it's not really the failure of uh, democracy in Africa. It's the failure of uh, uh, how uh, African leaders have um, carried on uh, with uh, democracy. You will see um, you will see elections uh, in a shoddy manner. Results are written. You will see the incumbents will change the constitution uh, to allow them to remain almost uh, a, you know life a president. We, you know it happened there recently in um, Cote d'Ivoire under Quatara, and uh, you remember Quatara uh, had to uh, fight to come in uh, by removing a bamboo. But the same Quatara is the same person who uh, has uh, changed his country's uh, constitution to enable him to run for uh, another term, possibly for life. We have seen the case in uh, Cameroon, the ca even uh, uh, Paul Kegane of Rwanda that uh, may be performing. He's also not uh, giving a uh, way to uh, democracy in his country, however uh, a performing uh, president he may have been. Let me mention one thing here. One fundamental um, a, a, a job for any leader is to, is to groom and grow success, successors. 
So any any leader that fails to grow successors that will continue from where he or she has started has actually failed as a leader. And that is what has happened in this uh, number of countries I have mentioned. So if you bring him uh, uh, the same thing, uh, the same uh, background or perspective to bear on uh, the Nigerian experience, you will see um, that uh, General uh, Abdurrahman uh, Tiani and um, his uh, boys that removed um, the former president um, cited um, some of these things. You know, Gabon, all of them. They, 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 these are problems in Africa. Now, coming to uh, the Nigerian uh, example, you asked a very fundamental question. Um, are we falling into the dark ages, or is this the way moving forward? Well, um, I don't uh, agree with either. Um, I don't think uh, we're falling uh, back into the dark ages. Neither do I believe that this is the way to really go. I believe that um, we, should, we should work on democracy. We should work on democracy. And um, what that means is that uh, we shouldn't uh, really encourage the return of the military. We should fight to enthrone democracy. The people must fight to enthrone democracy rather than uh, uh, encourage uh, the military to return. Because military is dictatorship. That's the truth. And uh, it means uh, on freedom. It means a total uh, absence of freedom. And um, no one man or a group of seen as um, qualified to take over the right, the democratic uh, rights of people. It is not uh, quite uh, good to change uh, the pattern. Now, having said this, it's a mixed uh, grill for me it from uh, this perspective. What uh, um, the former the nations, now they are foreign uh, minister, uh, Bakari Sangari, he was a, a, the UN um, Secretary General to represent Niger. And the reason is because um, they ousted the uh, Zulum's uh, 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 government also sent in a letter for representation. You know, so um, the United Nations was sort of caught uh, in between um, uh, uh, both um, requests. The, the, the military junta sent in a rep. Uh, the the Zul, uh, Zul, uh, um, uh, Bazoom's uh, government also, outstead the Bazoom's uh, government also sent uh, in a, a request to be represented. So I don't think that uh, Guterres, the UN Secretary General, really aimed by not allowing any of them to be represented until the issue of uh, legitimacy of uh, the government of, um, of Etienne is uh, fully established. Um, that said, I also think that the measure uh, to expel all um, um, every, everything West, everything United Nations from uh, Niger is a very um, good one. Yes, it, it, it helps to um, uh, convey the impression that the Tiani government has come to stay, that the Tiani government is uh, indeed in charge of uh, Niger as a sovereign country. And therefore, nobody should uh, meddle with uh, their internal affairs. That is what the uh, General Tiani is trying to convey in this um, response. But, you know, to take on United Nations is uh, quite, a, is quite a big one. I, I don't think it uh, should have gone that far. Yes, asking a, a, a French ambassador to leave the country, declaring him that the president not grant that. Well, that he has gotten away with because uh, Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, has uh, withdrawn the ambassador and they uh, also withdrawn the over 1,000 uh, French uh, troops that we have in Niger. You, you know, but, you know, the Africa as a whole is not on the table when it comes to United Nations. Why do I say so? United Nations is owned and run by the, by the Security Council. A Security Council is run and owned by five countries holding the veto. No African country holds a veto. In other words, 
if uh, they really decide, if the UN really decides to deal with the Niger uh, for being belligerent, there will be nobody to uh, to stand uh, up for to stand up for for the, the Tiani government. So it's not it's not good for him. I think it, I think that was a bit overreaching, uh, you know, because um, the, 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 I have already told you that what uh, what uh, Gutierrez, the UN Secretary General, did was justifiable. Because um, the issue of uh, sovereignty of uh, of uh, of uh, Niger is not what is the problem here. The issue is legitimacy of uh, the government of uh, General Abdurrahman Tiani. That is what is being questioned here, and um, he needs time to win more confidence. The other day, I read a couple of days ago that uh, the United States uh, sort of tacitly has. Um, um, come to um, accept the government of General Tiani by asking him to uh, rule out a transition program. You don't uh, tell somebody you haven't accepted to rule out a transition. That means transiting from you to the other, you know, in other words, the uh, U.S. U.S. has admitted. You know, so they need to build more confidence. It's not by taking on uh, United Nations. Nobody will be there for you. Nobody. There's no country in Africa that is on the table. We don't hold a veto. The five countries that hold the veto are the owners of the United Nations. And if they turn against General Tiani, it's going to be very uh, bad for his government and for the Nigerian people. But you've raised a very critical question. If um, Africa is not on the table, when we talk issues about United Nations, what are we really doing in the United Nations? Because it seems as if we are just members of a club where we have to be dictated to do this and do that. Otherwise, we are going to deal with you. And it goes on and on all the time. So what's the essence of us being part of the United Nations? Is it just to get grants? That, 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 that's, a, that, that's the problem here. Africa, Africa is not yet independent. That is one thing people don't know. Africa is not yet independent. The Anglophone uh, um, uh, countries, that is uh, countries they colonized uh, by, by Britain, uh, may appear to be less uh, constrained. But uh, if you come to uh, uh, Francophone, that is the countries colonized uh, by, Fra by, by France, it's more obvious because uh, their revenue, for example, uh, you know, is domiciled in, uh, in France, in uh, the French uh, Central Bank. And uh, they, they they don't have access to those funds. They they, they go they, they go for those funds as loans, and they pay interest on them. You know what that means is that they, they are, their revenues are still uh, being uh, collected by them and domiciled in France for the growth of uh, France as a as, as a country. So that that's that's a tragedy. If you come to Nigeria, we are not allowed to produce anything. We are not allowed to produce. We can't even refine our fuel. You know, you can see everything about the um, uh, IMF, World Bank policies. All this is are tailored towards keeping keeping Africa dependent, and that is one. That's one thing these uh, new uh, cupids are questioning. You know, the the reasonableness, the rationale. Why should Africa be sovereign countries, and yet they cannot they cannot decide their own future? They can decide their their lives and everything. That's that's it. So to that extent, they are justified, and a lot of people are keen into it. You see, look at the Nigerian experience. If you look at um, the three major policies undertaken by the Tinubu administration, they were not done to please uh, to please or help Nigerians. They were done to to win the confidence of uh, of the West. One is removal of oil subsidy. You know that removal of oil subsidy is essentially is essentially a policy that has been advanced by World Bank and IMF for decades. And of course, we are also forced to float our naira at the same time. And the two-headed, the two, uh, you know, the two -headed economic uh, policies are totally anti-people. But the Tinubu administration believes that it will gain them international assistance. So whether Nigerians die at home and the government is accepted internationally, that makes a better sense to them. That is where we are. So if you see that uh, kind of policy 
that uh, you are not even allowed to produce what you consume, you know, you can't refine your fuel, and uh, you have to uh, refine with them. You have to, even your cocoa, you can't convert into chocolate. You have to send the cocoa raw to them and receive uh, chocolate back from them at a cost they fix. You know, that's where we are. We um, made a rentier economy by these uh, new colonial policies. And that is what uh, uh, is at stake here now. When you say rentier economy, you are talking somebody like uh, a landlord who has built, he returns to go and receive rent. That is how Nigerian economy is. Our educational system, for example, is we pump billions in into funding a British educational because ours can work at home. I think that to answer you summarily, you know, it, it, we are making up the numbers of the numbers and then uh, what you call uh, giving a flag you whip the flag but you are not in charge it is just like a married a, a married man who cannot who can't uh, decide the number of children he wants to have the kind of food he needs to cook to even run his own home is still determined by the parents we see it around us you know so if you use that example to uh, look at uh, at the global uh, politics and where Africa has found itself, you will discover that Africa needs to be independent. And being independent is not just uh, 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 at uh, political independence alone. We have to be economically independent. We must move the continent from consumption to production. That means we must be allowed or we force our way into converting our own raw materials to finish their products, but they don't want it. They want Africa to remain supplier of uh, raw materials to Western industries. That is what this whole thing is all about. And they have been able to encourage the kind of uh, leaderships all over Africa that will make sure that this policy remains. In other words, they have allowed the kind of uh, leaders in Africa that they would not allow in their own countries. They allow criminals to be presidents in Africa because they will do what they want them to do, but they will not allow the same kind of people to be there, to be their president in their own countries. So why are they encouraging it in Africa? They are encouraging it in Africa in exchange for keeping Africa as a rentier economy, as a consumer economy. to understand the simple point. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's just let's just take a, um, a final thing because our time is actually up. Let's uh, we have like a minute more. Um, we need this independence. So far, you have said that, but how do we get the independence? Do we get it through diplomacy, or do we get it like they say, the uh, kingdom? You take it by force. Are we going to do that? Are we going to be do a very radical turnaround and say we are independent, or can we Georgia? to have this independence, which we have been claiming all this while that we have. Just George a final, a very, very briefly, now we're wrapping up. Briefly, you know, briefly, so that we gain new economic in have to subtly go about it. You can't also get it by force. You can't. Okay. But you just have to keep, keep a grooming leaders who understand Africa, that Africa has to work for Africans. Okay. When you get proper leaders into places, they will know how to navigate their way around it. It's a minefield. All right. You have to carefully tread around it. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Lomefo, for coming on the program. The pleasure is always mine. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, we've been Thank talking... You. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Lo Mefo on the program. We were looking at the ejection of the UN representative in Niger.
uh, for so many reasons that were outlined by that country. And we're looking about at the uh, actual independence of Africa. Are we free or are we not free? And how are we going to go about it, getting the much needed freedom that we need in Africa so that we can blossom? Lomefo was a very critical part of this discussion, and we thank him so much. At this point, we draw the curtain on the program this morning. It's been a pleasure being here with you. And on behalf of the entire Breakfast on Plus TV family, we say thank you for being there. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Shh.